Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a first look at a new C Sharp 11 feature coming out with C Sharp 11 and .NET 7 in November 2022 and that is list patterns. I have it running locally on the .NET 7 preview 4 and we're gonna see how it actually works and of course understand that this is not actually fully done, this is still being worked on. So take this as an opportunity to see what is out there. I'm gonna leave the issue that tracks the progress of this feature down below. So if you want to help the team shape the feature, please use that, go to GitHub, leave a very respectful comment or use this as an opportunity to help the team make this better if you want to help. Without any further ado, let's go straight into the video. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. So let me show you what I have here. So first and foremost, for this to work, you have to install .NET 7, it's in preview right now, and then enable preview features in the language version. So anyone can go and install this. Now to start, let's say I have an empty array of integers in this case. So it's gonna be just a new int zero array. And then I'm gonna get some text and I'm gonna use the empty array and switch on it. So use pattern matching on a switch. It would make very easy for me to actually demo the feature. And then I'm gonna say console.writeLine and I'm gonna print the text. Now every switch expression like this needs a default. So for that, and just to track when things fall through, I'm gonna use the default one right here. And if I go ahead and I do a .NET run of this, you will see that it just prints default down here. So this is all you need to know about the setup. Now, let's say I want to match this empty list here. How would I do that? Well, with list patterns, what I can do is say this, this represents an empty list, an empty array and say this was empty and that's it and if i do that and say dot net run then as you can see this will now the code will fall in here and match that empty array now you might be wondering why do we call it list patterns if you're using an array honestly like i don't know but what i do know is that if you try to say i enumerable here of integer and you try to run this then this will actually fail, it won't work. And the reason for that is that, well, the error says no suitable length or count property was found, which kind of makes me think that this is because on an enumerable, because it's just an interface, you're not guaranteed that the implementation has a length or a count at that time. It might need to enumerate it. And I imagine it would be very hard to implement that on the language level. It might be something that they can add in the future, but I don't think we're gonna get it in the first implementation of the feature. So just keep that in mind. You need something like an array or a list or something that has a length or a count property. Now let's take this a step further. Let's say I wanna match an array which has my name in it. So it's a string array and it will only have one item. Uh, I don't need the string here, here we go. And it's just my full name, Nick Chaps, here we go. So what I can do is I can say, again, same syntax, string, name and I can use pattern matching over here and I can just say my name is string interpolation name here we go and if I change that to a comma and this to my name and I run this then as you can see this is matching Nick Chaps because it's matching a list or an array I'm gonna keep calling it a list just because the feature is called list pattern but it's really the array here and it's gonna match a list with one item which is a string so if i was to break down my name to my name broken down and i say nick is one and then chapsis is another and i pass that down then if i do run it will go to default because there is nothing that matches an array of two strings here to do that i would have to say something like that so list pattern first name goes here and then string last name and I could do the same thing. My name is this. And that should be it. If I do .NET run, then as you can see, this is now using this one because we have the comma, as you can see here. So now this is matching an array of two things. If I did not care, and let me just comment this out. If I did not care, for example, for the last name, what I can do is I can just discard it. And I can remove it from here. I can say my name is and do a .NET run. And this will now only match that my name is Nick. And it still matches this row over here, but it just completely discards the last item. And I can do the same with the first one, of course. I mean, you can discard both and this will still work. You just don't have any values to play with. So if I did that and I 
uh, run it, it will say my name is nothing because it just matched an array of two strings. Now, if I comment this out, what I can also do here is let's say that this array doesn't have just my name broken down, but it also has like some stupid title like the second. I don't know. Am I the second? I'm on the second. So if I say broken down further and I pass that down, then what I can do if it has three items, but I only care about the last two and I don't really care about the first, what I can say is the following. I can say list pattern and I can do a few things here actually. First, I can completely ignore the first item. I don't care about this. Then I can, if I want to, match the surname and the title, if I want to. But what I can also do is I can say string array here and name this the rest because is what's left from that pattern. It's a slice of the rest. And it's an array because both of them will be in the same object represented by an array. And for that to actually work, all I need to do is say dot, dot here. And this will allow me to get a slice of anything remaining. If you had more things and you wanted, for example, to get a slice of everything, ignoring the first and the last, you could do it like this. But I'm just going to get a slice of the two last things. So I can do it like this and I can say my name is over here and for that to be pretty printed i'm just going to say string dot join and i'm going to join the two using a comma and then say the rest i think that should work so if i pass down i am passing it down if i use a comma here and i save and i run it then as you can see this is matching exactly that so it's a very weird looking thing i think it, it's a bit novel in my opinion especially with this operator and the slicing and how this works but you can do that and let's say if you only want to get a slice of the middle of the array so let's say that this array had four things the second um the brave i don't know let's say i had like two titles then i could ignore the first and the last thing so i can say coma and discard the last thing too. And this will get everything in the middle as a slice, no matter how many they are, because someone might have many titles. I don't know. So if I was to do that now, let me just add a space here and say .NET run. Now it will say chapsis the second. It's still gonna match it, but it's gonna match it by ignoring the first and the last one. A bit, a bit confusing, but I am about to make it worse. So let's say I have an array of arrays. This is basically a jagged array. So it is one of these. Now, if I comment out this so it actually matches it, how would you... Nobody asked for this, by the way, but how would you, if you wanted to, match these two numbers with a pattern? You can with this feature. Why? I don't know, but you can. So here's how this looks. We have the pattern and we're gonna write the stuff later. But first, in this case, we wanna ignore anything in the beginning. So for that, we can get like an anonymous slice that we don't touch. So it doesn't matter how many things come before the end, which is the one we care about, how many they are, just let them be. Then we need a slice of this array. So that will be a pattern within the pattern are you following? And then I don't care about the first item and I don't care about the last item, but I care about the middle items, which is an array. And I'm just using explicit type so you can actually see what's going on. So I'm gonna say middle here. And now I can go here and do the same. The numbers are and string.join and I'm just gonna use a comma here again and say middle. Oh, and this should be a slice. So slice here of uh, two. This is not confusing at all. This makes perfect sense. So if I do that, then I'm getting 10 and 11 with this list pattern. It's powerful. It's a very powerful feature. And you can do tons of things like this because this keeps getting recursive and you can use patterns within patterns and match things. Now, how useful this will be practically, I don't know. But the slicing mechanism, I can see maybe being useful. Um, I wouldn't imagine that anyone does anything like this. This is just to show how powerful the feature is. It shouldn't really confuse you. But on any other uh, array or list thing you might be doing, this could be handy. I think it's a bit 
odd looking. I think I need to think about it, looking at it. And I usually don't have to think that hard about the code I'm looking at. But with this one, I kind of have to. And I got used to the previous pattern matching with the angle brackets and all that. Uh, this looks a bit more confusing, but I think it can be useful. I just think it might be a bit more niche than other features. But what do you think? Do you think this is nice? Do you think we need this? Do you think you're going to use it? Do you think you have a use case for it? Please let me know down below in the comments. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you can invite a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.